I think to the way to address gun violence first you have to bring awareness. A message from Norfolk Police Chief Larry Boone. Boone has spent years researching with his department working to get answers on guns. I have no problem with folks exercising their right to bear arms. My challenge is how do we keep those arms from getting in the hands of people that should not have them. NPD is in its fourth year of tracking the history of forfeited guns, either that have been found or used in the commission of a crime. Historically, in the Norfolk Police Department, if there was a crime, let's say robbery, okay, we made the arrest of the suspect, we recovered the weapon, we would historically just place the weapon in abeyance, put it on a voucher, never to look at it. We had no background on the gun itself. I didn't think that was very strategic. We wanted to create a picture so we could take the guesswork out. It's given us an idea of what's going on um, as it relates to gun violence, as it relates to who's buying the guns, as it relates to where the guns ultimately end up. Let's dive into data we got from MPD for 2019. According to their report, 791 firearms were recovered or traced. Of that, 73 were reported stolen. What stood out the most was the cluster of guns that were located in um, are challenging communities. But the research goes further, looking at age, race, and sex. Norfolk Police's research also looks at guns traced to incidents and felons. For example, of 496 firearms recovered from individuals in 2019, 52 of them were involved in shooting-related incidents. Of those 52, 23 were recovered from felons. Guns don't fall in three categories. Guns was, was lost, the gun was stolen, a straw purchase. We asked Boone about straw purchasing. Let's say uh, Joe Smith is a convicted felon. Uh, he's not able to purchase a gun uh, legally. Um, he'll go get uh, a cousin or a relative that's never been convicted of a felon, that's in good standing in society, and that person will purchase the gun for him. Boone also touched on recent legislation signed into law in 2020, including required reporting of lost or stolen guns to law enforcement. With the legislation in place, we hope that one, it will change behavior. And if it changes behavior, it will hopefully reduce um, folks from getting guns that shouldn't have them in the first place. His department has also been vocal on social media, posting stats related to this information. I think when you paint a picture that's undeniable from the start to the end of the uh, gun recovery or the arrest, and you are able to see without question where the gun was purchased, where it was ultimately recovered, and who was in possession of it. Okay, there's a problem, and that problem requires the entire community to address. He hopes this type of research will be picked up by other departments around the Commonwealth. When we collectively as a whole throughout the state have some of the same data, says some of the same thing, everybody can't be wrong. Is this something that Chesapeake would consider possibly taking on yourselves or maybe collaborating with Norfolk on about this? Absolutely. We were simply amazed by the level of detail and, of course, the information that came from that. And we were wondering if similar conditions exist with us as well. The ideal goal at the end um, of all this is, is, is hopefully that violent crime will be reduced. We've also reached out to the other departments across Hampton Roads requesting similar data. We'll keep you posted if we get that information. In the meantime, the data we got from all three departments taking part goes back to 2017. You can find all that information right now at WTKR.com. I'm Zach Dahlheimer for News 3.